Hello! In this exercise we're going to talk about leg order selection criteria for the autoregressive model of order P. Um, how do you select the P? And for this you could of course try out different p-values, simply estimate and test whether the coefficients are statistically significantly uh, different from zero, or you can use information criteria and this is what this exercise is about. So let's dive in. All right, let's consider three commonly used information criteria, the Akaiki information, information criteria, the Schwartz information criteria, and the Hen and Quinn information criteria. Okay, and they all have a very similar structure. Um, you first add the standard error of the uh, white noise process or an estimate of the standard error, and this is the maximum likelihood estimate, okay? And then you have a different term, you add a term that has the number n of freely estimated um, parameters here, okay? So these are the three different information criteria that we have a look in this exercise. Now this TF is the effective sample size because um, we will estimate these models for p equals 1, p equals 2, p equals 3, etc. up to some maximum order that we think is a valid order. So for, for quarterly data maybe you would use 8 as a maximum, for monthly data maybe you would do 24 as a maximum lag order. All right, now let's provide briefly some intuition between the different criteria, uh, particularly which one asymptotically over or underestimates the correct order, and then we will write a function in MATLAB that computes this different order criteria for a selected p max, given data, given uh, a constant, whether or not I have a model with a constant or a constant in the linear trend, and this input argument crit is supposed to be a string um, that takes as input values AIC, SIC, or HQC. And then we're going to test this function on our simulated AR4 process, which is given in this MAT file. Okay. So, about the intuition, um, as I was already saying, the first term right here is always the same. And we want this first term, the smaller the better, is the estimation, right? If we estimate the standard error of the white noise process smaller, that is a good thing, okay? So, in a sense, we already can see here that we want to minimize these information criteria, okay? So, these can be negative numbers and we want to minimize them. Now, why do we use the maximum likelihood estimate here? Because um, we have already seen that compared to the OLS estimate, and OLS we actually correct for the degrees of freedom, and here we don't. Okay, so we recompute those information criteria for p equals 1, p equals 2, up to p max, and this term right here has no correction for the degrees of freedom because it's the maximum likelihood variance estimator. Now, when you compute these, um, um, you have to be very careful because the number of pre-sample set aside for estimation needs to be the same. And here we simply take the Pmax of uh, pre-sample values. Okay, now let's have a look at the second term. The second term basically penalizes how many coefficients I want to estimate, okay? So this is the n over here, um, the n over here and the n over here. The way this is computed, is different between the criteria, so here is where the criteria differ. And one can show in simulation studies and also uh, theoretically that typically the archaic information criteria uh, asymptotically overestimates the true lag order. The Hen and Quinn criteria estimates the order consistently, so the probability limit of a p hat is equal to the true p, and the Swartz criteria is, is actually something that we call strongly consistent, that, that means that the p hat, the estimate of the lag order, almost surely converges to the true value p. In practice, we actually often rely on the AIC criteria. It is better to have too many lags than too few, okay, in terms of estimates, in terms of model misspecifications, it's better to include another lag than to have too few in there. Okay, now let us write a function in MATLAB that does this computation for us, okay? 
So remember, we have to set aside Pmax um, observations uh, for the pre-sample, so we have the same sample size for all the um, estimates that we do. We have to compute the maximum likelihood estimate of the uh, standard errors, and then we simply uh, have to compute these three formulas. And at the end, um, I want a number that is the minimum of the selected information criteria. Okay. Okay, so let's write a function and lag equals lag order selection ARP data if I have a constant or a linear trend uh, P max and crit. Okay. Now the core of the function is to compute those information criteria. Okay, so I want to compute the log of sigma two sigma u squared um, plus two divided by t f times n. So this is if the crit, which can be a string, so there's a function string compare, if crit is um, AIC and strings are always written like that, then I want to compute this expression here, okay? Now, if the string is actually the Swartz criteria, then I want to compute not 2 divided by 2f, this term over here, okay? So I want to take the log of my effective sample size and divide this by the effective sample size times n. So I will need the effective sample size already here as well, okay? So I have to think about what it is. All right. And the last criterion I want to have is the Hannon Quinn criterion, which has also this term right here. And there it is the double log. Okay, so log, and it is actually two times log of log divided by that and like that. Okay. So now I want to do this not only for. So I have a Pmax here, right? I want to do do this for AR1, AR2, AR up to Pmax. So here I will use a for loop. So for P equals one to Pmax. Okay, I want to compute these things. Let's end the if. Okay, so I want to store this value. So let's call this um, in, in something, uh, let's call this info crit at place P. And I want to store this here. So let me copy this over. End the lines. So, and then I'm also need to initialize this. So, okay, let's initialize with not a number. So we know that if something went wrong, there will be an ends and I need to have a look there as well. So what is TFF? That would be T minus P max as given in the uh, exercise. Okay, so remember here the effective sample size used for all estimations. Okay, so that is the number of pre-sample values set aside for estimation is determined by the maximum order p max. Okay, we need to be able to compare these information criteria fairly. Okay, so t minus p max, I don't have t yet. Well, this is the psi y is a um, column vector, so the number of rows will be my t. Okay, and I've initialized this as well. Okay, now once I've computed these, um, or I actually need to compute the maximum likelihood estimate here, okay? So sigma u2 is basically the sum of squared residuals, so u hat prime times u hat, divided by the same sample size, okay? By the effective sample size, okay? ML estimate of variance of errors.
each of those p equals 1 to p max models, we will always divide by the same effective sample size, okay? Now we need to do what are u hat. u hat are our OLS residuals. So this is my data minus um, the regression matrix times um, theta tilde. So this will be the maximum likelihood. Um, well, actually, it's the same. So I can also use theta hat. It's this, uh, the ML estimate of theta is the same as the maximum likelihood estimate of theta. So what is the theta hat? Well, this is basically um, the inverse of y prime times y times y prime times lowercase y. Now, as you will see, MATLAB tells you that the using the inf function to compute the inverse is typically slower and less accurate than consider the um, backslash operator, okay? And so better way to compute this inverse is simply replace the inf function by the backslash here. All right. Now, we don't have the regression matrix here yet, okay? So this, this y over here. Okay, so we need to construct, in a sense, uh, our construct regressor matrix and dependent variable, okay? Keeping in mind that the number of pre-sample values set aside is determined by p max. Okay, so how do we do this? Um, well, let's create first the big Y here. Typically, we would do use this, this lag matrix function from the econometrics toolbox and do, so I'm creating the, the big matrix for the full model first, okay? And there, of course, I will have uh, an NANs in the first Pmax rows. Okay, so my vector of my vector lowercase y, um, I'm setting aside the p first pmax values, so pmax plus 1 up to t. Okay, and let me create the big um, y max matrix where I have all the lagged lowercase y's, and then in the for loop, I will simply take. Uh, the columns that I need. Okay, so y max would be y p max plus one up to t and all columns. Okay, now if I have a constant or if I have a constant and a li linear time trend, then y max will be uh, once tf one y max. So I'm simply adding a column of ones or also adding one, two, three up to uh, the effective sample size, okay? All right, now that is Y max. So the actual Y that I have below here is um, actually, y equals, have a look at the y max, I will take all observations, but only the first column, so that might be the, the constant and the linear time trend. Okay, so we actually have, um, oh, well, let's first define the number of parameters, so a one model with a constant and a linear time trend, we would estimate three parameters. Okay, and here we would need one to n of the columns. Okay, so in the third column, there's then the first leg of y. Okay, now this n is used in the formula below here. This looks good. Theta hat, okay, u hat, so okay, okay, okay. All right, now we need to output this here, okay? So we need to find the minimum value, okay? So let's store 
results and find minimum value of criterion. Now, let's put this into a variable results. Um, let's have one, two, up to p max, a column of that, and let's add my information criteria. Okay, so this is, let me see, a column vector. Okay, and this is also a column vector. Fine. And now my n lag is determined. I need to find the row for which the information criteria is equal to the minimal value of the information criteria. Okay, so this will be p max values and this min function will find the minimal value and then I will have a one. Okay, um, no, sorry, I will have this minimum value and then this expression here will provide me zeros and ones for the row that is that contains this minimum value and find will actually make a number of that. So three or four or something like that. Okay. And that's it. Um, if you like, you can also provide a nice display of the results. So maybe print a header here. So optimal endogenous legs from uh, percent %s. The crit is a string, this means string whatever is in this variable, we'll add it into the out output string here. Um, and I'm displaying my results as a table with variables lag and whatever the criterion is. Um, and I'm also displaying the um, minimum lag that is recommended by this criteria. Okay, so let's save this function right here like auto selection ARP, that is fine. And then let's do the remaining part of the exercise. Let's load my data. Okay, so let us close everything, load the test data, AR4 data, and let's include a constant and try um, the Pmax of 8 and here I'm computing for the different selection. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay, of course I have badly initialized this value. All right. And there you go. Okay. So here you can see the AIC criterion and the minimum value is given for P equals four. Okay, what about the Swartz criterion? Here, the minimum value is actually one. Okay, so here, that is what I was saying. Uh, this criterion would, I know, I mean, the, the true data generator generating process was an AR4 process and the Swartz criterion here actually recommends you too few lags, and that is more problematic than having too many lags. Okay, and if you can see, this is uh, the Swartz, and now the Hannon Quinn criteria actually also recommends uh, the AR1 model, but if you have a look, the AR4 is uh, close, to, close to that. That's the second uh, recommended here, okay? It's always better to have two many lags than too few lags in your model. Okay, now, as always, when you finish the function, let's write down, let's take the time and write down what this function actually does. Okay, so let's use the comment functionality here and tell um, others what you actually want to achieve with this function, what are the dimension of your inputs, what you expect the inputs to be, and what is the output. Okay, and maybe some contact details as well. All right, that's it. I hope you found this useful. Bye.